This week, the US flew a reconnaissance mission over eastern Ukraine for the first time. Flight data trackers were among the first civilians to notice the US reconnaissance flights. Twitter user Jerjohn, at Jerjohn underscore, noted, Two United States Air Force ISR aircraft, an E-8C J-STARS and an RC-135V rivet joint are currently up over the eastern half of Ukraine. Lieutenant Commander Russ Wolfkiel, a spokesman for the U.S. European Command EUCOM, told CNN on Wednesday that Monday's flight is the first time an Air Force E-86 has flown over the region. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the historic spy mission over eastern Ukraine by the U.S. military is a critical step. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support, so grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. The flight took place amid a massive, ongoing Russian military buildup on its border with Ukraine. In recent weeks, Russia has amassed tens of thousands of troops near the Ukrainian border. Last week, Ukrainian defense officials reported that about 265,000 Russian troops are deployed within 250 miles or 400 kilometers of the border, including 122,000 troops within 125 miles or 200 kilometers of the border. It was only seven years ago that Russia backed separatists who started the conflict in the eastern part of the country and seized part of southern Ukraine. Russia has threatened military measures, and the U.S. has stated that if it invades, then it will hit back with sanctions on an unprecedented scale. Western intelligence services, as well as Ukraine's, think an incursion or invasion could happen sometime in early 2022. The reconnaissance flights came two days after Russia announced it would withdraw about 10,000 troops from the Ukrainian border and send them back to their home bases throughout Russia. Based on the highly adaptable civilian 707-200 commercial airliner airframe, the E-8C Joint Surveillance Target Attack Radar System is the U.S. Air Force's primary platform for battle management and tracking of ground targets. The aircraft made its debut during Operation Desert Storm, where it played a crucial role in guided aerial attacks on Iraqi armor and ground targets for coalition forces. The aircraft can detect the approximate number of vehicles across a wide area and determine their location, speed, and direction of travel. The most notable external feature is the 27-foot or 8 meters long canoe-shaped radome under the forward fuselage that houses the 24-foot or 7.3 meters long side-looking phased array antenna. The antenna can be tilted to either side of the aircraft, where it can develop a 120-degree field of view covering nearly 19,305 square miles or 50,000 square kilometers and is capable of detecting targets at more than 250 kilometers or around 155 miles. The radar and computer subsystems on the E-8C can gather and display detailed battlefield information on ground forces. The information is relayed in near real time to the U.S. Army and U.S. Marine Corps common ground stations and to other ground command, control, communications, computers, and intelligence, or C4I nodes. 
As a battle management and command and control asset, the E-8C can support the full spectrum of roles and missions from peacekeeping operations to major wars. RC-135V Rivet Joint is an advanced version of the RC-135 family of large reconnaissance aircraft and is fitted with a sensor suite for tracking and identifying signals within the electromagnetic spectrum. The maximum speed of the aircraft is 540 miles per hour or 870 kilometers per hour. The range and service ceiling of RC-135W are 4,040 miles or about 6,500 kilometers and 39,000 feet respectively. The mission crew can forward gathered information in a variety of formats to a wide range of consumers via Rivet Joint's extensive communication suite. The RC-135 features an all-digital glass cockpit that can accommodate 27 crew, including cockpit crew, electronic warfare officers, intelligence operators, and in-flight maintenance technicians. While several of its capabilities remain classified, it is known to possess the technical backbone to support theater and national-level intelligence consumers with near-real-time on-scene collection, analysis, and dissemination capabilities. The RC-135V is also able to intercept and monitor communications chatter across a wide area and share the important pieces of information directly to forces on the ground. While Russia's military deployments have been rapid, the U.S. and its allies recognized the move early enough to alert one another and form a response. The United States, while not committing to military involvement, has managed to design a credible set of penalties and garnered international support for them. Bilateral discussion and NATO meetings have produced a set of potential political and economic sanctions several of which will be very much detrimental for Russia, like the proposed ejection from the SWIFT financial system. Not only this, Turkey is providing drones to Ukraine, the U.S. sent military advisors and Javelin missiles, while Germany is now reconsidering the Nord Stream 2. But these are not a real alternative to hard military intervention, and the flight by E-8C and RC-135V indicates that U.S. military involvement can't be ruled out in case of an eventuality. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.